Your forecast first, sponsored by Natax Heating, Cooling, and Plumbing. It is a quiet night across central Illinois here on this Friday evening. We are much drier and quieter. Temperatures still a bit chilly out there at 17. Wind chills were a little bit below that. Temperatures will continue to fall tonight. Teens on the board now. I think by tomorrow morning, they'll be down into the single digits. There is just a little bit of light snow flurries coming down from Peoria to Bloomington, perhaps making it in Champaign. Not worried about any accumulation tonight. And very quiet look across much of the central U.S. here after what an active week it has been. Here's Here's what we expect tonight. Those temperatures will drop down. I think we're heading for six tonight with a mix of clouds out there, perhaps a few flurries. That's it, though. As far as the cold weather goes, we'll talk about warmer weather on the way and a couple of rounds of some rain snow mix as WCIA 3 News at 10 starts right now. Now on WCIA 3 News. Friends are mourning a man killed in a car crash this morning, how he left his mark on those who knew him. The pandemic has health departments working hard across the state. Why, for some workers, that's unpaid overtime. And fans aren't in the stands to see the Illini now. Why, that may be a different story during the NCAA tournament. You're watching your local news leader. This is WCIA 3 News at 10. Please join me in Huntsman, Missouri, a moment of silence in memory of Jordan Ryan. Unity High School held a moment of silence before its basketball game tonight to honor a former player and coach who died. Good evening, I'm Paul Cicchini. 28-year-old Jordan Reinhardt died this morning in a wreck on I-74 near Farmer City. Reinhardt lost control of his pickup truck and hit a guardrail before being hit by a semi. WCIA3's Bryce Beeman is in the newsroom tonight. Bryce, you spoke with some coaches. Uh, what did they have to say? It's obviously tragic. Yeah, his coaches and coworkers described him as hardworking and loyal. Reinhardt was a father, a husband, and a coach. He leaves behind his wife and three kids. He also leaves behind a team of kids who looked up to him as a coach and role model. Reinhardt worked at Leroy High School as an assistant football coach. He also left his legacy at Unity High School and was very close with his former coach. I felt fortunate that I was able to go uh, say my goodbye yesterday and we could tell right away that uh, he was pretty special. Um, his energy and willingness to do uh, whatever needed to be done and his work ethic were tremendous. Some members of the community are working on putting together a candlelit vigil. A GoFundMe is also set up. So far, it's raised $82,000. We have that link on our website. In the newsroom, I'm Bryce Beeman, WCIA 3, your local news leader. Bryce, thanks. Now, at least six people were taken to the hospital after a multi-car crash in Coles County. Happened around 2 this afternoon west of Mattoon on Route 121. IDOT said several helicopters came to take people to the hospital. Two cars were totaled after the crash that left at least six hurt. A minivan was on its side with the roof ripped off. The other car's front end had been ripped off as well. State police said they don't know how badly the people in the wreck were hurt. Illinois Route 121 was closed for a couple hours, reopened around 4.30. A man in Decatur is facing charges for the shooting death of a business owner. 23-year-old D'Angelo Foster was arrested today. Police say he killed John Betcher, who owned a liquor store called JB's. Police found him dead at the store last year. They say Foster drove up to the drive through window and shot several times. Arcola police are searching for a man they say is armed and dangerous. They say 34-year-old Daniel Meeks is wanted on two outstanding warrants by the Coles County Sheriff's Office. He was last seen in Arcola in a purple Jeep SUV with Minnesota plates. The license plate number is on your screen right there. If you have any information, call police, don't approach him or that vehicle. Switching now to the latest on COVID-19 across the state, the positivity rate remains at 3.3%. More than 2,200 new infections were announced in the last 24 hours, along with 63 additional deaths. Now, public health departments across the country have been putting in lots of overtime since this pandemic began, much of it unpaid. That includes those right here in central Illinois. But they say they know it's part of keeping you safe. The deputy administrator with the Champaign-Urbana Public Health District says that extra work inevitably means longer hours. Their hourly employees, of course, get paid for that time. But half of their employees are salaried and have been working around 60-hour weeks since March. Yeah, all of our administration team have been answering emails, phone calls on evenings, weekends, early mornings. And, and all those hours don't get counted. 
so, I mean, you know, it, it's, it's expected that public health will step up during an emergency, but that's not necessarily for an, for an entire year. It's also the case in Vermilion County, where the public health administrator says he only has about one day off a month, but he says he does that because he knows it is what's necessary. A member of the Decatur Park Board is retiring after 28 years of service. The district says Commissioner Jack Kenny will be stepping down March 4th after nearly three decades of service. He's the longest serving Park Board Commissioner in the district's history. The board's president says Kenny's always been their go-to in figuring out how things were done in the past and how they can be done in the future. His vast knowledge is something she says is truly special. He was very uh, instrumental in helping me to grow into the role um, and of course now I'm serving as you know the park board president uh, so I, it just was it's just always instrumental when you have people that go before you um, kind of pave the way set the trailblaze for you and then you can come in and you can see what they've done and, and benefit from that experience the district will begin its search for a new commissioner. You can find out how to apply if you're interested at WCIA.com. Here's a follow-up now. We told you how Urbana native Jenny Garth won on an episode of Celebrity Wheel of Fortune. She donated those winnings to the Central Illinois Food Bank, and it couldn't have come at a better time. They've been working throughout the pandemic to meet demand, and that demand has only grown over the last week with the winter storm. This donation will go toward keeping shelves stocked at the food bank. They don't have a plan for the rest of the money, though, because they didn't know they were getting it until yesterday. Most people enjoy playing with their animals, but this bright spot doesn't feature a cat or dog. Plus, crowds were nowhere to be seen in sporting events last year. Why that's changing for the NCAA tournament. And Jacob, it is warming up, thankfully. It is. You know, we may get warm enough this week where the, you've got a farmer in the family. You might get that first itch. <laughs> the first one. A long ways away from getting out in the fields, though, certainly. Here's the interesting thing. The average growing season from 1971 to 2000 generally was 170 to 185 days. That was the time between the last spring freeze and the first fall frost. In recent years, though, from 91 to 2020, the average has gone up a little bit between 190 and 200. For us, that may mean we get that last freeze a little bit earlier. I don't think many people complain about that. We'll talk more of the warming temperatures coming our way. I'll take a look at a few systems as well, coming up after this.